Okay, we're live. Hi guys, it's Nick with another Hangout. I'm here with Zaheer again. Do you want to say hi, Zaheer? Hi everyone, it's Zaheer. <laughs> How are you doing? Now we've... I never know what to say for that bit. I really don't. No, it's really <laughs> awkward, isn't it? Um, we think chat is enabled, so if you're watching this, you want to leave us a message or ask a question, do so, and hopefully we'll get onto those. Uh, but yeah, we, we don't have any real plan for this. We just thought we'd hang out, have a catch up and talk about what's been going on in in the reselling world. Yeah, it's um, been quite an eventful few days, um, especially if you're in the old game of um, flipping Chewbacca masks, I believe. Um, <laughs> yeah, did you not get in on it at all, Zahir? No, no, you know what, Nick, I just don't, I just don't care for it. Um, I, I really don't. I just... the. I think the effort it would take to get around as many stores as I would need, it would take me all day in traffic. Like stores which are like a couple of miles away, et cetera, can, you can just end up being in traffic. And I just don't think I could cope with it. I mean, I mean, you guys were getting some crazy um, sale prices on them. But I mean, you know, I would like to, but just the thought of the traffic put me off, to be honest. Yeah, I'm in quite a good position. Um, because I've got stores in Hitchin, Stevenage, Luton, Letchworth, all within mm. you know, fifteen minute drive. So yeah, I suppose it's a bit easier for me. Yeah, I suppose I mean, in my head, I imagine because you're in London, it's all everything's local. They are. Local. They're everywhere. They're, I've got. I'm surrounded. Don't get me wrong. I'm surrounded by stores. Um, it's just don't expect that it to be a short drive. I mean, you know, you can just end up sitting in traffic and you know like I can't I can't be dealing with it. I think the school runs enough for me every day um, other, other than that I don't want to be kind of schlepping my way around stores and and you know getting those but I mean it was um and plus I think I'm just a bit too risk averse for it as well I, I think it's just yeah you know. I, I see it as very low risk because if it didn't work out or I didn't shift them I'd just take them back and uh, just say back. Yeah. I mean. oh, hey, hey, hun. Yeah, that's the missus. Hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, she's not going to hang around on the camera. But yeah, I was saying, I, I see it as fairly low risk because what I didn't manage to shift, I'd just take back anyway. And I said to you before we went online, and I've had, um, or we went live, I've had one return request already. So I need to message him and say, if it's unboxed, I'm not accepting it back. If it's still boxed, fine, send it back. And then I yeah. can just to Amazon, sure. Amazon no, to, to Argos. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I know what you mean. I think it's just that I, obviously you can just refund them and uh, like get, get your full money back. Um, just, I don't know, it's just, I, I suppose it comes down to, I think you've obviously taken to FBA quite a lot recently and it suits you at the moment. Um, I, I, I do dabble, um, but it is just that it is really dabbling. Like you know, I'll I'll get the odd sell now and then, um, but I mean I don't have a great deal of stock up there. Um, I've really been focusing on my eBay um, store a lot. Um, I think I've got to say thanks to Joe because I remember putting up um, one of my first reseller reality type videos where I went through my week sales, and um, it wasn't a great week of sales, put it that way. And I think Joe left a little comment saying, you know, seriously, it, the effect of, you know, sort yourself out because that's just not good enough, you know, in his way. And I, I was like, actually, he's right. This is really bad considering I'm meant to be doing this full time. So I really, since then, I've gone for it. And, um, you know, I've, I've, I've gotten just over 500 listings now. So I'm really pleased about that. So. Yeah, you finally reached that milestone. Finally, finally. finally. I am, I'm at about two or 200 odd, but... We, we've kind of gone different ways in this. It's interesting because I've, yeah. I've dropped eBay, but I'm not concentrating yeah. on that at all. I'm really yeah. pushing, pushing, pushing on FBA sure. and, and obviously trying to concentrate on getting the shop to where we need it to be. So sure. my eBay is languishing, I tell you. My sales are okay because when yeah. I do list stuff, it tends to be quick selling stuff. But as much yeah. as I list, I sell that much or more. So it, my inventory never goes up. It was mm. interesting. I saw that video you did about how much do I need in inventory to make a living from this or whatever the recent one you did you know yeah, what I mean? yeah and i i don't think there is a number because it depends entirely on your on your kind of business plan if you're selling stuff that's going to sell and it's got an instant market you could be running on a on no listings if you like yeah. if you list and it all sells that's fantastic whereas if you're at the other end of the spectrum like 
can it does make sense and if you're somewhere in between which i guess you are you know you're somewhere in between fast selling and slow selling stuff you do a bit of everything yeah, I suppose, I mean, yeah definitely i mean i think you do have to learn a few things ads is in the chat he says hi um so yeah. hello ads. <laughs> um like i think it definitely depends in the sense that um when you first start, you want to get max profit out of everything. You're really keen to make sure that everything you buy, you you rinse every single penny out of. And I think there comes a time where you realize that actually that's not always the best way. Again, depending on your personal circumstances. If you've got a huge warehouse um, and the items that you're selling, you can afford to just sit on for, for, for months, if not years, then you don't have to think about it that way. But I think I've come to the realization now that, you know, I can't have all my money tied up. Yeah. Um, especially with the upcoming move and things like that. I want to keep things moving along. And also I've noticed that I'd much rather recycle that money a couple of times rather than sitting on it um, just to get the few extra quid on, on one sale. Um, so I've I, I'm kind of uh, I've been I think Chad the um, Chad the golden finger picker in the states he's a massive um, fan and you know like he, he talks a lot about turn and burn you know just the speed at which you sell your items and I think yeah. that I'm I'm starting to learn that it's not that bad to take some offers I mean you know offers a good you know even if you, if you even if you take an offer that's a lot lower um, I mean you'll remember my bush. Um, that I've been sat on for ages. I mean, how long ago did I buy that? I mean, I bought that, I, it must be months now because we've been talking about a bush for a while now. Yeah, <laughs> you're not nice your bush. Well, I finally got rid of that bush. Um, it was hanging around um, just for, for far too long. And <laughs> <laughs> that's so wrong. I know, that, that bush has been languishing in, in my, my small box room for so long, unattended. And um, so I thought it was I thought it was time just to let loose. And um, basically, I had a guy message me, and because of the nature of the item, the guy was a collector. He already had three of these machines, and he he knew that this was faulty. And he was upfront with me and said, "You could probably get a hundred for this on eBay as it is, um, like faulty, brand you know, working. They go for three hundred. And bear in mind, I paid like nothing for it. But he only was willing to offer me 40 plus shipping. And I just thought, you know what? I can either turn this guy down and then wait for another six months um, or just take 40 plus six pound shipping and call it a day. It's still immense profit considering what I spent on it, um, yeah. which is pretty much nothing. I think a lot of it is personal preference and we've said this before and there's as many ways of doing this as there are people doing it and there's no right and wrong. I sort of sit somewhere in the middle, I do wait, I, I pitch most of my stuff at the height of what I think I can get for it. But I'm not scared of taking an offer or if it doesn't sell on the first cycle I will release it apart from reduce it and yeah. this means that the stuff is turning really quick. But I have no problem with the other business model like like Ken's. I mean, Ken's is very different anyway because his is so specialist, isn't it? He's looking for yeah. that one person he wants a medal from the Boer War or whatever, you know, and he prices it. It goes to his makeupastupidprice.com, as he says it. Yeah. <laughs> Whacks a top end on it and sits back and waits. And there's a lot to be said for that as well. But it all depends on what, what you're selling and what your business model is and how quick you need that money to turn over. And I think yeah. we kind of sit somewhere in the middle of that range of, of ways of doing things. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the little subtleties that you sl you slowly start to pick up. Um, and I think now I've been doing this for a while, and I, I can finally say that my sales have I've definitely noticed an increase with my listings going up. But it's yeah. not just with my listings going up because I've still got a lot of crap that's listed, you know, because every reseller will know this when you start you're buying things that a year or two down the line you would never look at but I'm stubbornly relisting them just because I bought them <laughs> and I know yeah, a time well, will come yeah. I know a time will, yeah. I know a time will come where I'll have to either just just get rid of them completely or I'll get lucky and they'll sell um, but you know even without that 500 there's probably a fair few items which I wouldn't now bother buying um, but definitely you learn with that and it's a combination of getting a lot of items listed um, but it's also 
about being reasonable with your pricing because I think pricing it is important even on eBay it is important um, obviously if you've got some insanely specific item then yeah you you can shoot for the stars um, but otherwise you know it's definitely worth um, bearing in mind the pricing is still important and um, we've got 23 people now watching um, Danny Scott says hi um, Petros asks what markets do you guys recommend to go to I'm not quite sure what he means by that um, Joe um, McNaughton says loving the regular videos Nick so keep the content coming well, I've been trying to, to get more and more varied videos out there. And uh, Zaheer and I were chatting before this about trying to get a regular show where I chat to different resellers or we have regular guests like Zaheer. I've never really got organized. Zaheer knows me well. I'm not organized <laughs> at all. <laughs> I'll, I'll just put it out there. Would people like to see perhaps a weekly show where I just chat either with Z or Tom or any of the other sellers? about reselling because i'm up for that if i can find a time slot that works for people so just let us know what what people want really from this yeah i think that's a good idea i mean 28 people watching now we've also got um royston gaming says i've literally just gotten a notification with a reasonable best offer whilst watching this happy days um hubble bubble says nick you are genuinely one of the nicest people i've ever seen hey <laughs> <laughs> who said that um hubble bubble <laughs> says Oh, I don't know if it is, and maybe maybe it's mine. No, it actually, actually, shouldn't my mum coming through the door, shouldn't it? Not Rebecca. It kind of ruined it. Cause the, the, oh yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the regular uh, thing is to have your mum coming through. Um, but anyway, um, notorious Sam Latchford video. Is that the one you're referring <laughs> oh, to? Just gen, just genius. Um, <laughs> Petros actually meant, where do you buy items from? Oh, right. So in well, terms I, of the market, so where do you get your stock from? Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you've not followed my channel, then you may not know, but if you have followed it, it's pretty obvious, because most of my hauls are from car boot sales, and I explain where I go and get my stuff. But I also do go to charity shops. I don't rely on them, because it's really you know, hit and miss as to whether you'll find any good stuff at charity shops. Although saying that, I've had some amazing stuff recently. I've had a really good year for charity shops. Um, but yeah, boot sales is the thing for me. I used to do auctions, but I haven't done for ages, and I'm itching to get back into that. I know that here's tried auctions quite a bit, haven't you? Yep, um, I, I normally get my stock from, I, I would say mainly car boots like yourself because you're never going to get the volume of stock for that kind of money anywhere else. So car boots should always be your number one, I'd say. Um, but yeah, I've done a lot of auctions. I haven't done recently. Um, it's because I've noticed that a lot of auction houses switch to just doing online and then they're charging kind of exorbitant um, fees in terms of like the the hammer prices and the VAT for using online, you know, charges for using online, etc. Um, so there's there is a bit of that. So if you can find a local house, which I do have a local auction house, which isn't advertised online, where you go there and you see some of the strangest people and some of the most you know um, pungent people as well. <laughs> um, as long as you can stomach that, it's 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 worth going. But the thing is with those auctions auctions is they can be very hit and miss just like boot fairs where you might go to one one week and it'll have a stack of stuff and the next week you go to it and they've barely had anything handed in so um there is that to bear in mind so, so i'd say definitely boot fairs like yourself really is the main thing and then auctions and a bit of charity shops i do get some good stuff from charity shops um we've got Suggan day says hey nick big fan um ads and petrol say both they would like to see a regular show Fake Rachel says hi. Um, we got a wassa from uh, Fuck Raw Siraj. Um, Rafiq asks, how do you do research before buying the items? I'm going to try to keep up with this because it, otherwise it gets crazy. Yeah, that's cool. It's, it's got good. To six people that. watching as well. We've got 46 oh. people watching, which is pretty awesome. Um, it's 45 now, but yeah. <laughs> what was the question? How do I research before buying? Buying items, yeah. A lot of stuff, because I've been doing this for quite a while, and you'll find this, if you start reselling, you will gain very quickly a certain amount of knowledge. So you can pick up stuff, your kind of bread and butter stuff, as we say, because you've sold it before. So you can buy it safe in the knowledge that you're confident you can sell it. But if you're not, 
just use the eBay app or the Amazon app, whichever platform you're using, and search completed items. It's as simple as that. As long as you've got signal, you know, you don't have to buy blind anymore. I mean, the whole reselling game changed for me when, when you know, 3G and 4G came in. Just changed it completely. Yeah, I mean, you can instantly look up information. And along with that, it's also worth looking at what things are selling for at the moment because just because you've had, um, you, you've looked at completed listings, um, things could have changed. The item could have gone up in value. Um, it, you know, it, there might not be many for sale at the moment on eBay. Then you can adjust your price because of that as well. I mean, I've had a couple of items recently where I've bucked the, the trend of the pricing um, on the eBay. And it, it's a nice feeling when you, it's a nice feeling when you set your price. Um, it's it's one of those things where you know, for example, I've been selling a lot of baseball caps recently, um, like kind of vintagey, weird ones um, with specific patches. And sometimes these things are selling for as little as five or ten pounds. Um, I've recently sold a DHL baseball cap for thirty-one pounds something plus shipping. Um, yeah, I saw yeah. that. Who and, and, was the <laughs> mind? Who would say that? DHL cap. No offense to it and your item, but it looked like a cheap piece of crap. And I thought, well, what is that? Or maybe it was for a, a film or a TV show. That's the thing, isn't it? It could be, for it could be you never know. Um, I mean, I've just today, actually, this morning, sold um, a cap which was um, by a government aid agency. So I don't know who wants one. It's an aid agency that works in the Horn of Africa. And um, it's called uh, something U cap, and this is a cheap cap, but you felt the material; it wasn't cotton or anything. And I sold that today for twenty-one pounds plus shipping. So, if, if you've got items that are rare, um, you can buck the trend. So, as completed listings is a guide. With that sort of thing in mind, I, I showed those really nice PS One pickups I had recently. Yeah, and I because mainly with those because they're not particularly rare. I mean. One of them, that one is quite a rare one. Yeah. Um, but you can get it a lot cheaper. But because of the condition on these, and because I sell across Europe as well, I'm, I'm going super high and I'm going to wait. I'm going 30 quid plus on all of these. And I'm pretty sure I'll get it, even, if, get I it, yeah. wait, even if I have to wait till Christmas. Because well, their title demand will just stay there. Well, that's just the thing. It's judging it, you know, specifically in that sense where, you know, like you said, you looked at the condition and you're like, this you well, can uh, something like that. I will yeah. put it on. I will be the cheapest FBA just, just to, to get shift. Red, yeah. Even on that, I think that's eighteen pounds because it's sealed. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, really shocking. Whereas used, you'd be lucky to get a pound or two. <laughs> um, we also, got a question: Is there any one? Um, for cool Siraj asks: Is there any one particular item that you've picked up that's a rare item that you would never sell? So, have you picked up anything that you just could not let go? I, oh, what that I kept for myself? Did you kept for yourself? Have you done that recently? No, <laughs> um, I don't really keep anything anymore. I have so much crap. I don't. I don't want to keep anything else. Um, I, I've mentioned before. I used to be a big collector uh, of all sorts of different things, and I just don't really collect for myself anymore. I, I I still have a big big collection of antique cigarette cards, but I don't actively source for that even. This fulfills my kind of collector hoarder habit so and yeah i'm i do keep some um dvds and blu-rays to watch for ourselves and then sell them on and a certain amount of games i do that with but on the whole no what about yourself have you found any gems that you had to keep hold of um i've not I, do you know what the only thing i keep hold of is clothes um or trainers because i'm too stingy to buy new so it's mostly if I see a nice pair of trainers or footwear, um, I will end up keeping that. But as it when it comes to like cool stuff like video games, no. I mean, recently I came into a really amazing Commodore Amiga collection that I almost thought about keeping for a while, um, but then nah, just 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 brutal, just just went for it and listed yeah. it all. What's the market like in that? I've not sold any Commodore for it must be oh, five. Amiga stuff is hit and miss, um, but in terms of in terms of how much. However, there are certain titles which command a lot of money. I mean, I sold um, Christmas Lemmings for fifty something quid, and that was I took an offer. 
Um, I could have probably again waited and blah, gotten a bit more, but I was I thought fifty quid, yes, have it, mate. Um, and I shipped it to to France, and I was I was more than happy um, to to so ship. Where, was, where did you source the Amiga from? The boot fair, boot fair. The guy had a massive bag. Um, he had the Amiga and a bunch of games, and he was like, "I, I don't know how, um, how much will you pay." I said, "Well, I'm going to offer a little bit of money. I'm only going to offer you a tenner." And he said, "No, no, you can't offer me a tenner." I said, "Thirty. I, I, I skipped twenty for some reason. I went to thirty, and he was he was very happy with thirty, and I was shocked and happy with the amount. I mean, I I think I must have gotten about thirty boxed games." Um, and plus the Amiga itself, which works fine. And um, I've been testing the games um, and, and, and saying whether they reach the boot menu. And there was a couple of gems in there. I got um, some Dungeons and Dragons type game gems, which were quite good. And um, so wow. I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, but no, I'm not going to keep it. <laughs> it's going for sale. Um, okay, let's have a look. If we've had a lot more questions. Um, Todd Venn says, I was chatting to a work colleague about you today, Nick. He too got started with your help and insights. There's a guy on YouTube, Nick Hills. Yep. So you're now the name. <laughs> you're literally. You're literally... I, I don't think I'll ever get used to that, that people, you know, know me by name and know You're going to be in the dictionary soon, just like Google, you know, Google it. <laughs> What would Nick Hills do? Um, Can I just say, while, while we've got lots of people watching and chatting, 59. I just, does anybody know the reference that this is? If you know me and you've watched my videos for a long time, you could probably just guess. But yeah, put in the comments and let Zaheer know because he's looking at the chat. I I can't see it on mine. What okay. do you think? I haven't got a, flu a clue, to be honest. No, okay. No. See if anybody know out there is it, knows. Is it a movie reference or is it a music reference? I'll give you it's a, mu a music reference. A music reference, okay. Yeah, somebody okay. out there will know. Okay. Um, get that though. Savage says hi everyone. Finally got to see Nick live. Um, Socket Gamer says hi. Um, okay. Polishek says hi. Uh, <laughs> Nick just okay. said Hitchin. I was born in Hitchin. Uh, David Wright was born in Hitchin, so that's good. Um, wow. Okay, Nick, do you still have the Planets of the Ape box set? I picked up the collector's head at the weekend, but minus the DVDs. Uh, it, uh, maybe. I don't think it had a whole lot of value. I don't know what I did with it. <laughs> to my <laughs> right there, there must be two or three hundred DVDs. I don't know. Not sure is the answer. <laughs> okay. Um, and some of the, I think, okay. Um, I've asked you before about shipping, but what are the chances of customers saying they haven't received their items when you send it not signed, asks Rafiq. Uh, it happens. Um, the way I do it, and there's, again, there's no right and wrong. You just have to do what you're comfortable with. What I do is I send anything over twenty pounds recorded delivery. Anything below that, I'm, I guess I'm taking a chance. But I get very, very few item not arrived. You know, it's like one percent. Oh, you're all right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened there. I was, I was fiddling around. Some uh, yeah, I think people people get too hung up on that. It does happen, and people do scam you. It's kind of part of the cost of selling online, but. I wouldn't pay it too much attention, really. I'd get on with selling. You know, if you get 1% of items go missing and you have to refund, then just accept it. That's brilliant advice, I think, because it is the truth. Um, it's not often that it happens. I find that a lot of the items that I sell, um, I have to send as a small parcel. So I use Hermes anyway. So I get tracked delivery that way for £2.64. Um, I think it's meant to be going up soon, but it's still <laughs> very good value. Um, and, you know, you get tracked delivery from it. So, you know, don't get too caught up in the, um, in the whole, um, you know, people trying to scam you. Yes, there are scammers, but like you said, it's, it's such a small percentage. I mean, considering how many items I sell a month now on eBay, the amount of issues I could probably count on one hand. So, you know, it's not an issue. Um, by the way, ads and many others, um, Flying Sheep Rally and Michael Shotton have all said Depeche Mode. 
Ads new, yeah, ads new. He said it, um, and then um, then we had. Um, I bet they just googled it. <laughs> oh well, maybe flying sheep rally and Michael sh um, shot in there. Both said, yeah, they all said Depeche Mode. Yeah, yeah, they could have googled it actually. It's a good point. It's a good point. But then that wouldn't be winning this now. Is really, the classic, the classic lineup from the eighties and nineties before Alan Wilder. This guy here, he left. Ah. So it's now just the three. Not like you care, Zay. <laughs> no. You know what? I, Rebecca probably loves Depeche Mode. It's her, she's the one that listens to all of that era of music, I think. Um, yeah. I don't know. I am I listen to a range, but Depeche Mode just, you know, isn't not my cup of tea. Radar. It's just not on my radar, yeah. It's just not on my radar, you know. So, <laughs> I, I've been listening to Azalea Banks lately, 212, which is a terrible song, but I like it. Um, okay. Um, at... Let's have a look. Ad says he did not. He, you know, um, I won't uh... Good on you, Ads. You've got to <laughs> um, Okay. Um, good used goods says, I find for me it happens in waves. It seems when I get a return, another four or more are sure to follow the day after. Honestly, I only get four to eight returns a year. Um, it's not many, and maybe one guy is a scammer. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it can. I suppose it can feel like you get them in waves, but like you said, if you only get four to eight returns a year, um, depending on how much you're selling, that's really nothing. Um, you know, it's just the cost of business. I mean, you've got a bricks and mortar store. Um, you get people trying to get five finger discounts from you, I presume. We get a, a surprising amount of theft. I mean, we've had when we had our gaming store and we used to do CDs, DVDs, high value, small items, even without the discs in, right, we would get a lot of cases nicked. And you kind of expect it when we set up the kids clothing store and it's all second hand anyway. <laughs> we, get that effect, but we get a lot. We find empty hangers all the time. Oh, gosh. I mean, people will steal anything that's oh, got yeah. a price tag. I think that's the thing. You, you could put a price tag on a dried dog doo doo. And I think if it's got a price on it, someone will come along and... and... My, my <laughs> uncle's phrase is, if it's not nailed down, it's yeah. fair game. And that's it's how fair. people see the world. If it's not nailed to the floor, it's fair game. It's fair game, that's it. <laughs> um, Ads is disgusted and says, what are you saying, Zaheer? Depeche Mode are great. I never said they're not great. Um, I just don't care for them. <laughs> that's all. It's, it's... I'm, I'm cool with that. We all have our own taste. Exactly. exactly. Um, Robert Woods asks, how do you guys find out where all your car boot sales are being held? It, um, are there Facebook pages or web pages with this info on? Um, and I can tell you from my personal experience, yes, you got it in one. Um, go into Facebook, type in the, na the name of your local area that you live in and type in car boot. Um, or you know, you, it will come up with um, any Facebook pages of groups locally, um, there are websites you can just type into Google. Um, just, you know, if you, as long as you know the names of your local villages and towns or cities, all you've got to do really is type in the name of the town, village, and type in car boot. Yeah, I'd say um, Google is your friend for the, for the get go. And then when you go to a boot sale, quite often they run several in their area. There's a big firm that runs loads in Hertfordshire. So ask the organizers. And then um, local papers, they list one-offs, and they, they quite often, uh, the boot sale organisers will advertise in local papers. So, get, so check those out as well. And then just talk to people at them. Find out from other vendors and from organisers. You'll soon get to know. We have now got 70 people watching us, which is pretty amazing. That, that might that be is... a record. I've got no idea. Oh, I've got, I can see. I've just noticed where the count is. Seven. Can you? I just noticed. You, you should do what Raking Profit does and ask everyone to smash that like button. You know, you've oh, got, you've, smash the like button. Smash that like button. You know, you've got, you've got to do that. Oh, look, someone's already done it because that's fantastic. Um, we've only got six likes with 71 people watching, but still, I'm sure you will get there. Um, Ryan Brown says, Nick, the nails too. So, you know, you said <laughs> if, it's not, if it's not nailed down. Yeah, the nails too. It's mine. H. Mulani says, Zahir, I grabbed the DVD VHS player. Thanks to you. All thanks to you. Well, that's great. Um, it's it's good to share. Um, I think that's another comment, uh, topic that I wouldn't mind touching on. Um, we've now gone up to 18 likes. 
just because of saying smash that like button. Okay, let's do one more time. We've got 68 viewers. We need 68 likes. So Minimum. Let's see if we do this. We're up to 20 now. Smash what? that like button. Smash that like button. Yeah, you, that's what you would do. Um, I cannot do an American accent to save my life. I can't either, as you can tell. But anyway, <laughs> I think no, what were we saying? talking about, I want to talk quickly about like the whole sharing of information and um, the fact that our Facebook group in the UK is pretty much built on it. Um, when it, 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 the reason it became popular was because people shared information, um, and I don't think there's any harm in sharing information because, you, like I've said before, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You can give people all the information in the world, but that doesn't necessarily motivate them to go out there and 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 go out and do it. So. If you're a reseller in the UK community or if you're watching the US community, I don't think there's anything wrong with sharing. It doesn't do anyone harm. And I think you get back so much more information than you could possibly give out. Um, if you create that environment, if you've got a group of a thousand people willing to share what they've learned and picked up, whether it's bolos, whether it's tips and tricks, um, you could give out as much information as you have but you're always going to receive more back. So I don't see the, the harm. And I mean, Nick, you've given out pretty much everything that you know. Um, you've just been like, here you go. Um, has it affected you negatively? Um, no, I mean, as you say, we've talked about this before. And a, a big thing that I've got out of sharing is I'm now not doing this on my own, in my own little world. I've made I don't know how many genuine friends that I talk to on a regular basis now. And I've, yeah, I've got more than just tips and bolos and all that out of this. I've got, you know, it's helped me in a personal way with confidence and it's helped me with friendships and feeling not so alone and strange doing this. What is quite an odd thing. It's quite an odd career choice, if you like. But since, you know, the whole community kicked off with me and Tom and then yourself and others making videos and now it's become this thing that's ever evolving and ever growing. It's, yeah, it's just become a bigger part of my life, the social side of it. Before I had a job and I did it with my wife. I did, <laughs> careful people. <laughs> that, that, she would be pleased to hear that, I'm sure. Maybe actually now, actually, at home. Um, but now, yeah, I have a, a social group connected with my with my job, with my career choice, and that's that's given me so much more than monetary value. And if I've, if you know, if I've shot myself in a few, with, foot with, uh, uh, if I've shot myself in the foot with a few things I've shared, I've gained so so much more in other ways. So I'm really not bothered. I'm, I'm going to continue doing what I do, as in the YouTube, because I enjoy it and it's become a big part of my life. So. I mean, yeah. now and then you will get the odd person that will leave um, slightly negative comments regarding sharing and they will feel somehow that they're part of like a, an elite magic circle, um, you know, that, that only they should be privy to information. It, it's not how it works. I mean, if you want to look at the future, just look over the pond at the States. Um, you know, they, they've got a much more evolved situation over there, I think. And the people that are out there and that are go-getters, that are true hustlers, or you know, whatever you want to call, it, they will survive. They will adapt. So um, oh, you know, that's a good point actually, because hmm. if all of the drama that we had a few months going back when we did that little TV slot that hasn't even been released yet, yeah, I got all of this torrent of hate. Yeah, like if all of what they were predicting was going to happen, why in the US? When all of this kind of happened five to ten years ago, why is that massive community on a huge, you know, much bigger scale than our community is? Why is that not destroyed reselling? Why are all the guys that started making videos still making videos and still doing very well out of their chosen career? Why is it not all fallen apart? It's just... Yeah, it, 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 it's it's an attitude thing, I think. I mean, like for example, a lot of people have recently latched onto um, the whole Amazon FBA thing, where um, you know when people are doing retail arbitrage, um, there's been the news over in the states that companies like Microsoft, Nikon, and um, I think Sony, I'm not sure, uh, decided that you can't sell new or used anymore. Now, 
the same people that probably think that a YouTube, a, a YouTube community or sharing can ruin their business are probably the same people that are, are, are messing themselves over that. Um, you have to be willing and ready to adapt to changes. You can't forever expect the same thing that worked for you five years ago to still work for you now. I mean, if you just look at yourself, Nick, you've just said that, you know, eBay was working for you a couple of years ago when you started making videos. Since then, your situation has changed. You've got the shop, etc., and you've now adapted and gone on to Amazon. You've adapted. You've not, you've not just stayed with eBay and started to sink and sink and sink. Because you didn't, because if you'd stuck with eBay doggedly, for example, you wouldn't have had the time to keep your listings up, to maintain the amount of listings that you're doing, the work that's required for eBay, versus Amazon. I'm, I'm presuming. I mean, I'm guessing here, but in terms of running a shop as well. Well, it's just about yeah, what works for me in my situation, yeah. really, and I, yeah, it, it's difficult because. My situation is very unique because I'm, I'm kind of juggling three different platforms and I'm kind of doing too much, to be honest. Yeah. But, you know, if we can't get the shop to where it's going to go, we will drop that and we will, yeah. you know, it will be hard to do so because of all the work and money we've put in, in. But I could foresee a future where we don't have a shop in another year's time and I will go back and all of my efforts will be on eBay and That's I'll be right back up there numbers and turnover sure. wise. Sure. Yeah, it's just about. But the point is adapting, isn't it? The point is what you're yeah. saying there is I will adapt. Um, so, you know, I think if you're out there and you're in this, I'd say share, carry on sharing. It's good for the community. It, it's what built, it's what brought the community together. If everyone was closed from the get go, there wouldn't be the community there is now. You've got to have um, a sharing kind of spirit where you're willing, and it's not necessarily always about products. It can be tips and tricks or just how you deal with things um that's my humble opinion anyway um okay we've had a few more questions and comments da, 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 da. bear with me da, da. okay that's it that's it okay Reseller Robert says, when I worked in the charity shop, a coat went missing. The lady that was in the day before came in the next day wearing it, thinking no one would notice. Wow. That's, wow. that's, pretty, that's pretty bad. That um, by the way, we've shot up to 33 likes, Nick. Hey. So that has definitely been smashing that like button, and um, that's yes. really good. Oh, hang on. I've just plugged in my phone and it's just uh, okay. with the Max doing crazy things. Yeah, that story about a coat reminds me. When I was in the, for those who don't know, before, way before all of this, I was in the police force, which I left to set up my own business. And um, the first ever arrest I had when I was a uniform officer and I was out on the beat was a guy who went into, I think it was a Marks and Spencer's clothing outlet, and he, and he wanted a, a coat for his wife. And his plan was to just put it on <laughs> And walk out. Like, but the security guys just saw him do it blatantly and walked out. And anyway, we, we got the call. We went to Marks and Spencer's and we went to the little room out the back where they hold yeah. the people. And I went in and this poor guy, he must have been about 70 or whatever, was sat there still with this woman's coat on. And um, he was crying, bless him. And he was saying, it's oh, my no. wife's birthday and all of this. And the woman that I was with, I was still like on probation. So I had a, a training officer with me. She yeah. said, right, this is your first arrest. And I had to arrest this poor <laughs> <laughs> I read him his rights and arrested him. And it, oh, it was painful. But, you know, he was paying to rights. He still had this bloody woman's coat on. That's an amazing story. That is fantastic. Oh, no, just ruthless, aren't you? She's ruthless. Yeah, that was yeah, that's my amazing, exciting first arrest on the beat with some poor old some man. Snivelling old man. Um, okay. Well, we've got um, Polishek says reselling is awesome. Leslie Dabrowski says love Nick's videos. He's got me now looking for games. Um, Polishek says it's easy money when you're into it with a full heart. Knowledge is money. That's fair enough. Um, okay, let's have a look. Uh, Nathan Crothers says, now I shouldn't really bring this subject up because I don't like it, but um, hey, great chat. Any tips on how to best sell Lego? Oh my God. Yeah, you're not a fan, are you, Z? No, I, I do think the best way to sell it is quickly. Um, just, 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 
it, you're right though. It comes down to what suits you. If if yeah. your if your head's not in the whole Lego game, you no. could buy a job lot and just resell the job lot. If you've got it cheap enough, you could pass you that on so quick yeah. and make fifty quid on the whole lot. You know, kiss it goodbye, and then that would work for some people. You could take it to the next step and just divide it up into kilo bundles. Don't even take anything out. Just divide it into kilos and sell it at 15, 20 quid a kilo and maybe make an extra 50 quid on top of just selling the whole lot. Or you can pull out all the more valuable bits and do little lots with those, which is kind of where I'm at with it. Um, I used to go right down to the individual part number uh, when I did Lego and nothing else but Lego a few years back. But it depends how far you want to take it. And Lego isn't for everyone, is it, Zaheer? <laughs> I think it's quite a good um, topic in a way because it does show that um, you do have to have some level of, of, um, you know, of motivation to sell what you're buying. Um, it, it, you know, so be careful when you're out there. Just because, just because you find the Taj Mahal Lego set really cheap, Unless you're willing to go through the many thousands of pieces that it takes to, to build that thing and, or, or to, to see it through, it's not for everyone, is it? I mean, it's a good point as well because you have to factor in how much time are you actually going to spend doing it. And I've probably been guilty of spending too much time on Lego where it hasn't paid off. Do you see what I mean? If you spend a whole day sorting out a load of little lots that aren't really that valuable, would you have been better off? just job lotting it and moving on to something else. You know what I mean? So you need to weigh up how valuable your time is, especially yeah. if you're part-time, because part-timers have less time to dedicate to this. So you perhaps yeah. need to get the quicker flip if you're part-time. Well, hopefully that helps, Nathan. Uh, Daniel Rogers says, hi, lads. And Young Slinko asks, hey, Nick, when is that telly program on that you filmed for? You can give it a plug if you want. Uh, that's not being honest shit up again. Uh, <laughs> we don't really know. Uh, all we were told by the the uh, like producer guy um, was July, and I think that's as as accurate as he could have been. Okay. So I don't know. Okay. Um, a bat says, "Love the DM shirt, mate. Best band ever." So oh come on, the best love. Bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Todd Venn asks, Nick, now you started Amazon, do you consider focusing on either eBay or Amazon and what benefits do the platforms have over the other, if any? Well, that's a big question. Wow, yeah. Um, well, I'm going to continue doing both. Um, I, it's just juggling time with me. But yeah, if you can do both, I think it's great because you get the best of both worlds. The in brief, I did a video recently saying what the advantages and disadvantages are, actually. So search for that one. But in brief, Amazon, you do the work with FBA anyway. You do the work up front. You package all your stuff up. I'm just doing a shipment here. So you package your stuff up like so, send it away, and that's your work done. Whereas you'll know with eBay, you've got a lot of work up front because you have to write each listing. And then when it sells, you've still got work to do because you've then got to pick it, pack it, and do all the customer service. So, yeah. But, of course, there's more fees with FBA. So you've just got to weigh it up. I, I keep saying I think with FBA, you need to really do it on a certain scale to make it worthwhile. I don't think it's worth dabbling. I don't know. How have you found it, Zaheer? Because I know you, you're not – you kind of half thrown yourself into it. Yeah, I mean, I, I... – I think it comes down to expectations because I do just dabble in it. I don't expect um, a big paycheck. Um, the only reason I'll use FBA is if I know that, if I know oh, cool. um, if I know that I will get a, a significant um, increase over eBay. So, for example, there's certain items out there that, in my opinion, will sell a lot better. So, for example, Polaroid cameras for me. Um, there's certain Polaroid cameras that will get a lot more money on Amazon FBA than they will on eBay, um, to the extent where you can obviously buy on one and sell on the other. So, I kind of do it with that in mind rather than, you know, uh, so if I come across something that, that that will net me a lot more value, so I recently come across a Harry Potter scene that was sealed, um, second edition one, um, on eBay I could I'd even seal, I would be lucky to get between 20 and 30 pounds, on Amazon I'll get like 60 pounds, so even after the FBA fees. Um, I don't have a pro account on FBA, I've just got like the the kind of, you know, the one where they charge you the extra pound or something per 
per item. Oh, okay. So you don't so, pay them. No, 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 no. I don't know. Like, it wouldn't be worth it for me because I'm just simply, oh, okay. not, you know, so I just sent. I, I didn't, I didn't realise you could do it that way. I thought you had to have the £30 subscription, which is why, in my mind, you have to be doing X and Y numbers. So, yeah, yeah. That's good to know. I didn't actually yeah. realize that. Yeah, you don't have to have a pro merchant account, I think. It's like a there's a merchant account and then there's pro merchant. So a merchant account's free, but the, the, the fees are a bit higher in the sense that, that I think they charge you a certain amount per. But am I right in saying that you have to be HMRC registered? To yes. Do you do have to be HMRC registered, yeah. You have to have your I UTR. Failed to mention, I failed to mention that in my recent video about what is FBA. I still get questions like you just had about, yeah. you know, what is FBA and what the difference is. I get that all the time because I, I forget that people don't go back and watch my old video, so I feel like I'm repeating myself. But, yeah, I um, forgot to mention in that video that you need to be upfront about your reselling if you're going to dabble with Amazon because they want you to be registered as a business, even if you're part-time, to be able to sell on their platform through FBA. So just bear that one in mind. And there's a fair amount of paperwork to go through to get that. So that's something to consider, certainly. Yeah. Um, okay, what else have we got going on here? Um, actually, da -da -da. wow, the chat's moving along at quite a pace. <laughs> it's, okay. Um, no restrictions here in Canada, says good used goods for Sony or Nikon. Well, that's good. It may, it may change, though, and the idea is just to be willing to adapt. Robert Wood says, if anything, sharing is doing resellers a favor as it is bumping prices up on eBay. Well, you could see that way, definitely, Robert Woods. I mean, if you're educating people on what sells and what you can get for it, then you may start to price your items um, to what they're worth if you weren't previously. Um, <laughs> Ryan Brown says, surely those shorts are dry now. Um, I'm guessing so. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. They're, they're just there, so it's <laughs> a good comment. <laughs> Frank Wood says, "Hi guys, thanks for all your great advice. Take it with a pinch of salt. We are just a couple of geezers on the internet, but I think that's much appreciated." Yeah, thank you. Um, good use good says Amazon seems to, to me, for me to be more work upfront than eBay, but takes way less effort and maintenance maintenance than eBay after sending a shipment in. That sounds like a fair comment, or? Yeah, I guess so. I, I still think eBay is more work because you have to do all the pictures, you have to actually yeah. write the script for your, you know, write the, your listing and do all of that. Whereas to, to list this FBA, I just scan it, set my price. You don't have to put that in a bag, but I did, and then chuck it in a box. So, yeah, yeah I find... With FBA, I find you have to do a few shipments to get up to speed. My first couple took me way too long. You know, what I mean, it's just it was such a faff. But now I've got a really good system, and I can I can bash through it super quick. So I find it way quicker than eBay. David Wright says he used to work for W H Smith in Nottingham, and one eighty-year-old man came in every day and stole a newspaper. We only found out when he admitted it after we finally caught him. Wow. <laughs> uh, that, that's just a great story. Um, you don't need to add anything to that, but thank you for sharing. Um, Ryan Brown says, don't make a rod for your back out of Lego. Uh, do you mean literally or figuratively? Um, <laughs> okay. Old Haggis Hunter says, greetings from the cold and rainy realm of Edinburgh. Greetings. Hello. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, we've got some more stories of petty theft. Good use goods says, when he ran a car wash, he watched an old man stuff over 50 of the free tree air fresheners, jam them into his coat pocket. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, all the things to steal. Um, that, you know, that's like um, when people go to hotels and they take all of the free stuff. Have you seen that Friends episode where they take everything that's free? I love yes, that. Yes, yes. Uh, Nathan Crothers says, Cheers, great advice. Currently suffering from Lego blindness. Too many small bits and subtle colour differences. Job loss is the way for me. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. Take it as far as you want. I mean, if you go on eBay and search, um, I can't remember the names, I think Little Bricks is one. There's quite a few shops who, who go to the complete extreme of selling them by the individual parts. 
but they sell hundreds if not thousands of orders a week and you know that method works for them but for a lot of us that's taken it too far and I don't have the time to, to do that really but I had a load of pre-sorted Lego from a couple of years back that was already sorted which is why I have been listing you know really finely broken down stuff recently but Moving forwards, if I pick up Lego now, I'll probably just do it in kilos and pick out a few valuable bits because I don't have the time now. I just, it's looking at it makes me sick, Nick, to be honest. <laughs> um, Shaztastic says, hey, guys, I just got a message saying I've become a top rated seller. How do you find this benefit? And what do you know about eBay premium service benefits as well? Thanks. Chiching. So, um, well, it's it's always good to be doing well on the platform of your choice. So if you've become a top rated seller, that's a good thing. It's only going to give confidence to, to your, um, your, your customers. So I, you know, I'd say go for it in terms of the eBay premium service benefits. Um, they're not amazing. Are they? I think you get a small discount off of your fees. I think I get 10% you have discount. To, you have to offer X, Y, and Z on your listing. To um, on, yeah, on some of your list, yeah, you've got to offer certain things like free postage, I think. Yeah. Is it? I'm not sure. I, I, but yeah, I, I, I would, yeah, just list as you want, I'd say. Um, the, being a top rated seller is the important part, I think. It, it's important to be a top rated seller. Because yeah, it's hard to know what, what benefit I get because it's, yeah. it's been so long since I haven't been one. Although I did lose it for a while and saw no difference in my sales and then got it back. You know, <laughs> so it's really hard to say. I think it does help you in your items being thrown up high on the searches, which is always helpful. So it's worth holding on to if you can. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, we have got some FB. Um, there's a couple of questions um, about FBA process. Um, I mean, if you go onto Nick's channel, then um, I think you've got videos covering like the basics of it. So probably best to have a look at that um, because. You know, it's, it's it's kind of long to get into in, in a chat, really, isn't it? Um, okay. We've now got 72 people watching. You could find one of my FBA videos, and if, if it's not answered, write me a question in the yeah. comments because I respond to those. So if it's, a, if it's a specific technical thing about FBA, if I can answer it, I'll do that in the comments on the actual video. So, Ask, but, Yeah, brilliant. We've got 72 people watching, and we have got 36 um, likes. Um, old Haggis Hunter says they're here. I think those trousers on the radiator are starting to smoke. I hope not. The radiator <laughs> is not on. <laughs> You're making me feel very conscious of them, but <laughs> I'm probably going to get told off by the wife now. Why do you leave them on the radiator all day? <laughs> they're not drying. Oh, ah, they're not drying. They're ripped. They just need to be sewn up. See, we sew things uh -huh. up because we, you know. <laughs> <laughs> got to darn your shorts. Yeah. Actually, Nick, I've got a question for you. You've got a bunch of these Pokemon little figure things, haven't you? Yeah. Have you done anything with them yet? No. I've got a box. <laughs> you got the hand. I must have two or three hundred. Oh, I want to yeah. do a video soon and show those because I need to sort them out and list them. But I'm now I'm kind of getting to summer. I'm thinking I might as well wait till Christmas because they'll be a good. <laughs> I picked these up for one pound sixty. Are um, they the tiny ones? Though? Yeah, the tiny, the tiny ones. Yeah, I picked yeah. them up for one pound sixty, which is pretty cheap. I'm thinking I might just do a multi listing. They're like they're quite cute, aren't they? Yeah. I've got Charmander, Charizard, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I just just pick those up, and I was just like, oh, I wanna. I think I might just do a multi listing and get rid of charge postage and. I looked. Things when I first picked up the first collection, I've had a few mm. smaller collections I've chucked in the box since, and yeah. it's absolutely all over the place. Certain ones people were selling individually for fairly good money, but it was yeah. almost not worth your time. Yeah. And, but I think bundles is how I'm going to go, like 10, 15 in a bundle. bundle I don't know, it's really yeah. difficult because they've yeah. had several issues and the earlier ones are more sought oh, after. It but could become a bit of a hassle. That's but, another good topic, actually, like about... When, when you're selling so many different things, you do have to, to a certain extent, throw yourself into whatever you're selling and become like a pseudo, like pro at whatever you're selling. And you find that you pick up knowledge on so many different things. And um, for example, finding the right keywords, like knowing to put gen one or gen two at the end of one of those is, a, is the difference between getting 
three quid and maybe 10 quid. Absolutely. I mean, every niche is a whole little world when you get into it. It's like My Little Ponies, right? We used to do loads and loads of My Little Ponies, but yeah. I hardly ever find them anymore. When we started this in the late 90s, early 2000s, we'd go to a boot sale and we'd come back with 20 or 30 ponies. These days, we're lucky to find any, but Andrew and I found some yesterday and, and a few weeks back. And um, if, you, if you get into that, there are websites which have like search engines where you can put in certain attributes and find out the exact name and the year and all of this stuff and it makes such a difference because if you can name your pony and then list it with its name you Huge will find that person exactly. is actually looking for that one and then ask a premium so it really pays to, to to do your research but the cool thing is these days there's a website for everything there's a website to research your transformers there's a website for he-man figures there's a website for pretty much anything so google again google is your friend i mean that that's a good point i mean i made a video recently about the same kind of thing but with shoes um you know i'd learned the difference between an oxford and a derby shoe um you know the, that kind right. of thing it's, it's it's such a it's such a simple word but knowing that word is is very important i think it can definitely help um couple more questions coming through um anthony smith says hi i only sell on ebay using my mobile can you do turbo listing using a mobile or do you have to use a pc to use turbo they say you have to use a pc you can't use that on a mobile um yeah. craig so r says thank you nick i've been reselling for a year and it's all credited to your videos hats off to you thanks so, you must never get tired of hearing that it must be such a great feeling it's, yeah it is quite odd it's especially because I, I'm almost certainly never going to meet most of these people and to know that I've had a little hand in, you know, changing their life in some way. I know that sounds quite grand, but it, it does change people's lives and yeah. that's quite, quite a big deal. <laughs> it's, well, it's true. I mean, I'm kind of like an example of that, really. Yeah. Um, so. and that, but the beauty of that is what I love about you is you, you embrace YouTube and you yourself have now inspired, you know, hundreds of people yourself and it kind of just grows it, it grows you've got another fan of um dm love the t-shirt mate dm are fantastic says bad fuck up uk i had to say his name oh. <laughs> <laughs> start with a c um there are yeah um miss flipping crazy asks what is your must have go to buy that if you spot you grab every time no matter how random do you have like a Something that you never leave behind. Um, anything retro gaming, pretty much. It has a value. Anything sort of PS1 and earlier. Well, PS1, there's still titles I wouldn't touch with a you know long stick. But pretty much previous to that, I'd pick it up if it's the right price. Yeah, I mean, um, I always pick these up if I see them. I got this today for £8. It says drinks chiller. Really? Yeah. Oh, these are brilliant. Um, I've picked these up for as little as 50p in a pound at boot fairs. I paid eight pounds for this at the charity shop, but it's a drinks chiller. What you do is you fill it with ice water and it's got like a rod which spins and you yeah. put your can of drink in there or your bottle of wine in there and it spins it around in the ice water really quickly and it can chill your drink in 60 seconds apparently. It's by Maytag. And it's one of those gadgets, right? they, they created a gadget to solve a problem that didn't exist. What's wrong yes. with putting a fridge? I, I would say a fridge or a freezer is just <laughs> as good, but people pay um, 30 to 40 pounds for these. So, uh, what? Yes. And depending at the time of season as well, but I've sold them for about, I think the most I've sold one for is 42 quid. So, um, for eight pounds, I'm not going to leave that behind if I ever see it. And it's such a boring looking item. A lot of people will ask it. So now you guys that are in the chat, 78 of you, we've got 38 likes. Come on, that's got to be worth a few more likes. If there's anyone else, let's give a few more likes. The Maytag drinks. I've still got, you know, I've been picking up videos. Oh, I've you're still got, picking up videos. Uh, I haven't even listed the one that's brand new in its box. That's an easy list. I don't even have to test it, really. That is laziness, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because it is lazy in a way, but I've been busy doing other shit. It's all right. <laughs> exactly. Um, Ryan Bowman asks, how do you keep paper records that would satisfy the accountant, accountant tax man when you don't get paper receipts? 
Um, also, do you keep all charity shop receipts? Um, yeah, any receipts you should keep. So charity shops, auctions, they'll always print you out or write you out a receipt. Keep that. With the car boot stuff, you just write it down, don't you? You just put the date down and yeah. what it's spent. I, I've been asked this so many times. Yeah. I Very early on in the early days, um, I went to the one of the tax office that they've actually closed now in Hitchin. There used to be a tax office not far from where my office is here. I went in there and I said to them, what do you recommend? I'm in this line of work. This is where I source my stock. I can't physically get receipts. It's impossible. Am I okay to just do this? And they were just very by the book. No, you need a, a official receipt with their name and address and this, that and the other. And I said, I just explained. I can't do that. If I buy this from someone for 50 pence, what am I going to do? Get them to sign a piece of paper and give me the name and address. I said, it doesn't work. I, I showed them that I'd just been keeping written records and that's, technically, that's not enough for the inland revenue. And I said, well, what, what can I do then? And they had no answer for me. So I said, I'll tell you what, I'll carry on doing what I'm doing until you tell me it's a problem, yeah? And they yeah. said, yeah. I think that's exactly. Well, I that think was, that was um, 12 years ago, I think that was. So there isn't really an answer that will, you know, make you happy. You just have to get on with it and hope they don't audit you and throw the book at you. Yeah, well, I think paper records should be enough, really. I think if you're writing down the dates and how, you know, the date of well, doing it, you can't really ask for more because there's no there's no other proof, is there? No, but I, I can see it from their point of view because yeah. I could, when I've got a little book here, I could put whatever I want in there. I could say I spent a grand last weekend when but I But then did. they can cross-reference with your library of YouTube videos now, Nick. <laughs> they possibly could. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know everything. <laughs> so, uh, show the other hundred quid's worth of gear. <laughs> um, Kevin Rousen asks, are there any products that you have never sold but would really want to in the future? Ooh. There's What's... not really a market I'm trying to get into. No, good yeah. question. I, I don't know. I, I would like to um, do, I, I said at the beginning of the video, I'd like to go back to doing auctions again and do a bit more of the vintage because I haven't really touched that stuff for a long time. And watching Ken's videos has, has you know, got those juices flowing. Yeah, vintage items are pretty awesome. They, they, they're, they're fun to mess with. Um, but again, that's like a whole nother world to learn as well, isn't it? Um, okay, Adam Butterworth says, Ben Fitzpatrick looks different. Um, I don't know why. That's a bit of a weird comment, but okay. He looks different to how he used to look, or he looks different from the norm. Maybe he... they were expecting Ben today, and they got me instead, so they... Oh, because I... No, I did say that I'm, I'm doing a chat with Ben, but that's coming next... Next, next week. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, the Lego one. The Lego yeah, chat. I've been trying to hook up with Ben to, to chat about Lego. Oh, <laughs> Your nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> um... Andy Brown asks, any experience selling electronic crossword dictionaries? Seem to be good sellers when you can find them. Um, yes, there is a market for them. I actually recently picked one up by Seiko. But again, like with anything, and this applies to anything, there's, there's going to be ones that are in demand and there's ones that aren't. The one I've recently picked up isn't in demand. I'll be lucky to get like a 10 or plus postage for it. But then there are others which can sell for 20, 30 pound plus. Um, depending on the model, so yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I saw the Scrabble one. I, I, did a, I think I showed it in a video. A Scrabble, like little dictionary thing that gives you words. Oh, right, right, right. And that went for twenty or maybe more. Can't remember, but that sold super fast as well. Yeah. Um, Miss Flipping Crazy says, "Cool. I've never seen anything like that chiller though. Lol, love it. Brilliant." Um, Jeff Solo asks, Nick, when are you going to list that NRL shirt? NRL shirt? Oh, I bought loads of um, football shirts. Is that uh, the new rugby league one? Yeah. I haven't done anything with them. I need to, I need to clean, a, um, put a couple through the wash, and then I'm going to binge list the lot. Is uh, the okay, that's the plan. And he also says, Jeff also says, great chat, guys, enjoying it. Nice one. Good. Um, resell in says ha this ha this is the first live chat I've seen hello all thank you um, we... Robert Woods asks here have you figured out where you're moving to yet um, kind of yeah I think um, so <laughs> we have a rough 
Wow. We have a rough county. Um, we're going to be making another visit up north soon. So we have we have a rough idea, um, but nothing's 100% until the, the tenancy is signed. Um, so God knows where I'll end up. I mean, you know. Are I'm, you planning to move in next door to Ken? <laughs> yeah, next door to Ken. That would be great. Yeah. Next, in between him and Hixie. Um, okay. Um, we get, for Cruel Siraj asks, what's your biggest buying fail? What's my biggest fail? Fail, yeah. Um, I don't know. Have you got any to hear? I think, yeah, I mean, things that you buy, I think I, I dabble in electronics. So, um, you know, I'll often buy something, um, well, not often, but I have bought items, gotten them home, and they don't work. Um, I think one of the more expensive ones was I bought a PlayStation 3 for 15 quid, and it had a yellow light of death on it. I ended up selling it for about and breaking even-ish, I think. Um, but, I mean, that, that happens. It's, it's nothing major, because like you said, since the advent of 3G and 4G, um, I've, I've not much yeah. that doesn't have a market. I have certainly bought electronics that don't work. Um, I've had a handful of things that have turned out to be fake, and one recently. Um, Andrea bought a Hermes or Hermes French bag, and we're still on the fence as to whether that's fake or not, to be honest. You got it. She paid, I think it was £30, which sounds a lot. It's a handbag. Um, but if it's genuine, it's, it's old, it's a bit worn, but if it's genuine, it could be hundreds of pounds worth. If it was in really good nick, it could be, you know, pushing a thousand. But we've gone on websites and tried to work out if it's genuine or not, and we're still kind of 50-50. She was going to make a video, actually, and, and throw out there if anyone has any expertise on it. But, yeah, that could end up being a £30. There stake. are companies which will do the certifying for you, won't they? I think there are companies out there where you can, um, who have so-called professionals, and they'll, they can look over your product, like maybe send them photos or or send them the item and they can verify it. I don't know if it's worth doing if the if the cost yeah. is there. And that it would safeguard you on selling on eBay as well. Yeah, yeah. I know of that sort of service for coins. I mean, Tom's talked about this before, where you can send a coin off and get it verified, and then they mm. seal it in one of those little things. And there's companies that do that for sort of medals, I think, and that sort of stuff. They, they certify it's a genuine whatever it yeah. is. So yeah, that might be a route to go down. And I think we need some advice because we've gone on websites and on, in some aspects it looks 100% and on others it's a bit not sure because it's all about the quality of stitching and it's all a bit objective really. And we're, it's kind of, That in itself is quite bad when you think about how much these things cost you. Um, yeah. um, okay, what, is, what has been your favourite ever find? Kelsey 80 asks that. Kelsey 80 uh for me um oh my god there's so many we've had this question a few times you, you need um, to remember it and have it to hand one that i picked up going way back when and when i when i just discovered ebay and i'd started reselling and i was reselling game and watches and i remember finding one of the game and watches it's a it's a larger one where you flip the whole lid open and you pull out two little hand two little controllers on a long oh, wire wow boxing one and when I found that I nearly wet myself I was like oh my god that, yeah. <laughs> I was still partly collecting them but I'd started reselling them more than keeping them if you see I mean I was on the cusp then but I, I wanted it so much for myself and when oh, wow. when he gave it the card and it was decent I was just like yes, yes. Come on. and uh, I think I flipped that for about a hundred and paid I think it was four pounds so that was nice. That is pretty cool. Um, I've got to say my favorite find was last year um, where I picked up um, two pairs of these amazing boots by a company called New Rock. And they do these kind of goth type boots. And um, I, I, I had this pair of ladies and this pair of men's ones. And I kid you not, I wore the men's ones around for a day just yeah. for the... <laughs> Because they were just so, they reminded me of the boots from the guys in Gears of War. These things were huge. I mean, these were chunky as anything. But the quality of these boots and just the look of them, they were badass. And um, I paid, I think, 
20 pounds for both or 25 for both and I sold them for like 80 quid each so but that, that's probably my favorite find just because of how cool these boots were so the new rock is definitely a brand to look out for um they specialize in these kind of um uh, you know that kind of heavy metal slash goth kind of style yeah. of shoe you know really awesome know those in a, in a pickups video were they shown in a video I did show them in one of my early videos. Yeah, I was really. I vaguely remember seeing them. They thinking were, they were the men's one actually had a dog chew bite in it as well. <laughs> and it still sold for eighty quid. Like a dog. Adds to value. I'm sure the ads value to that. The ads value. Yeah, these, these have been through. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, okay, Ryan Brown says he's got a couple of fax machines boxed five pounds each. Believe it or not, they're still in demand. Thirty to forty on eBay. Thank you for that info. Um, wow. Yeah, it's amazing for a fax machine. I know. Tell me about it. It's it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, I was going to say, Z, if we do a couple more questions, then I'm going to have to wrap up because I, oh, I need. It's, to God, it's nearly eight o'clock. Yeah. Oh my yeah, God. So I, I can be five or ten minutes late. Yeah. But yeah. It's nearly eight o'clock. When did we start talking? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure how long we've been waffling. Oh my God. All right. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, a couple more and then we're up. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, um, have you any of you guys ever been to the car boots they have in London? Seen one or two YouTube videos and they and look awesome. I've obviously been to some, but yeah, like anywhere. I think you can find awesome stuff anywhere. I don't I, I think you can always chase the rainbow and the grass always looks greener on the other side. Um we've seen amazing pickups in the reselling group from people all over the country. So you know, it's, it, you know, I've been to plenty of boot fairs down here, which are terrible. Um, the thing is, you're always going to remember the good stuff, aren't you, Nick? Like when you do hauls, it's the good stuff that sticks in your mind. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And and I think to remain positive when you're self-employed, you focus on the good stuff anyway. I mean, I, I've said this before. I am an optimist eternally, and I think I have to be to to do what I do well. If I focused on the crap, I'd just be I'd just be a nervous wreck. But yeah, talking about that, I've not been to any of the big ones in London, but when we've holidayed down in Devon near where Caroline is, I've been to some there in the most amazing scenery, massive ones spread out over fields. And oh my God, I went to some of the best I've ever been to in Devon. So they are everywhere. Boot sales and quality boot sales are everywhere. You just got to find out where they are. Where, wherever you live, there's likely to be an affluent area near you if you're not lucky enough to live in it yourself. So my advice would be to go to an affluent area. Even though I live in London, I live in quite a poor area of London, um, Croydon, Thornton Heath. It's not great. So I go to where the money is. I, I go to a nicer area and it pays off. So just go to that. Joe's Patch. Wherever Joe's Patch is. I <laughs> just go to the area Joe's Patch is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, let's have a look. Um, we've actually had, um, Kelsey has said that Hermes bags are worth thousands. I'm a handbag reseller and can check for you if you send me photos. So Kelsey 80s offered okay. you that, it's nice of, nice Can you, you message me and so we can get in touch and I'll see what I can sort out because that would be super helpful. So thanks for that. Okay, um, I think the last comment I'll read out, Chelsea says, great chat tonight guys, really enjoying it. Um, we've got about 70 people watching ended up on 48 likes and only one dislike which is pretty awesome so i um, always get one there's always at least one yeah. i think it's the same <laughs> yeah it was me no it's, 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 it's doing it from this end no i mean um let's have a look um Kevin Rouson, this will be the last one we'll do. Um, I just picked up some good camera equipment. Any advice for when you are selling to people who probably know a lot more than you? That's actually quite a good question. So if you're selling something that is going to go to a collector who may know more than you, um, all you can do is do your due diligence. So it, I, I'll give you a recent example. I've been selling these Amiga games. Now I'm selling them to collectors. Um, and doing a bit of research going on an amiga forum taught me that people will still buy games that don't boot up because they're on floppy disks some of them won't actually work um i tried some games and put them in and they came up with a disk read error but i just did a little bit of research and found out that they're still valuable um and you know you find out what people are looking for so even if you're selling to people that know more than you um you can still arm yourself again with the power of google um so um, I wouldn't be too concerned about about 
about doing that. Um, you're not going to be an expert in everything you sell, just by the nature of the job, because you sell yeah. everything. A, a good tip, I've done this a few times, when I'm really unsure, I've, I've done my research and come, come to dead ends on things. I've listed stuff and said, I'm no expert in this, be very open, just say, I'm no expert, this is what I think I've got. Please, anybody out there who knows any more, message me. And quite often, people have come on and messaged me on eBay and given me all the details. So I just cut and paste that into my listing. Wow. And that's terrible. It's not a bad thing to just be upfront and say, I know very little about this. I've tried to research it. If anybody knows anything, anybody knows what this is, how it works, blah, blah, blah. And you'll be surprised how many people will give you the information for free. Or there are forums out there of... Mm -hmm. of you know, there are forums for Pokemon, there are forums for you name it. And you can go on there and say, send a picture and say, what's this? And they love it. They love telling you stuff about it, honestly. Nothing makes them happier than a chance to show off their knowledge. Oh, good. And, yeah. and, and I think that's great advice, absolutely great advice. That, you know, we're, because of the nature of what we're doing with generalists, you're going to pick up random things. Um, for example, a great example is this Swatch Watch I picked up. Paid three pounds for it. And I had a right nightmare finding what it was, but this is actually one of the rare models which was a pager as well. Um, it's actually got like a BT number on it on the That's back. Cool. Yeah. yeah it's so, um, and I found out the information by going on a Swatch forum. Um, so, it, you know, it's little things like that. You're never going to know everything. So, um, research is the key. So, what, what's up? Of interest. This is my first question with most things. What's that worth? <laughs> I think probably about 30 quid. I wouldn't say more than that. So not a massive amount. If it's boxed and new, then obviously a bit more. But it's quite rare because it's still got the sticker with the BT sticker with like the, the telephone, um, the, tele the, 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 the pager number and um, the megahertz reference and stuff. So it's actually quite cool. Um, so I'm going to get a battery put in that. I paid three pounds for that, and it's got a nice leather strap um, made yeah, in like Italy or something, or in Austria. I used to wear pop, remember pop swatches, the bigger ones. Yeah, yeah. I used to wear those in the '90s, and you used cool. to pop them on your, on your like hoodies and stuff. Oh, I was yeah, so cool. cool. Uh, you're just too cool. Pages take me back. When I first met Andrea in 1997, she had a pager. Oh, <laughs> That's how <wow>. long. <laughs> She had a pager. Wow, that's awesome. Right, I'm going to have to dash, mate. Yeah, no worries. That was fantastic. Well, what yeah. we'll try and do then, I think the general response was a regular thing is cool. So perhaps should we say we'll do that? I'm, I'm more than up for it. We've got 65 people watching, 53 thumbs up, which is pretty amazing percentage. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll do a regular hangout on my channel. You're always welcome. I'll spread the word around the group of our friends. Sure. Just try and get some a regular thing going on a on a Thursday. Yeah, that'll be fantastic. We'll, we'll aim for about six ish. <laughs> <laughs> six ish would be good. All right, mate. That's how organised I am. Right. Okay. Right. Well, anyway, thank you everyone for watching. Really appreciate it. Fifty-four now. Okay. Take care. Cheers.